Hello, in this video we'll see a short motivation um, for modern algebraic geometry. So by modern I basically mean algebraic geometry uh, with uh, the viewpoint of schemes. So let's see the motivation. So what we are interested in is um, solutions of f of x equal to zero for some polynomial in several variables, let's say n. And an example would be uh, the circle. So we have x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Um, that's, for, uh, for instance, over the reals, that's just the unit circle. And <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Uh, another important class of examples are elliptic curves. So if we are not in characteristic 2 or 3, we can describe it by an equation y squared equal to x cubed plus ax plus b. And, well, elliptic curves are important in all of mathematics and also occur in cryptography. And, yeah, so, well... Normally, on elliptic curves, one would also um, give some conditions on A and B so that it's non-singular. <clears throat> but as this is not about elliptic curves, we won't bother with it here. Um, okay, so um, we can also see already see with um, the circle and elliptic curves that um, solutions of such equations or we could also um, want solutions to equations like this, so that we get several um, zeros that they um, are related to geometry. And the first um, important result uh, connecting geometry to algebra is um, the Nullstein sets. So let's stated um, there are several well more or less equivalent or sometimes stronger and weaker but often one can um, get one form from the other but there so there are several formulations but uh, let me state the formulation we uh, use for this motivation so Let's take an algebraically closed field. And the statement is that points A in, uh, say, k to the n, well, I call it capital K, so k to the n correspond bijectively to maximal ideals. So let's see the projection. So we have this point A, which maps to the ideal x1 minus a1 and xn minus a n. So the ideal generated by these elements in, um, let's <clears throat> so this is in the polynomial ring. Okay, and um, it's quite easy to see that these things here are maximal ideals. We just um, take the quotient and see that it's a field, namely it's isomorphic to k again, and so that's no problem. And uh, the actual statement is that all maximal ideals for k algebraically closed um, are of this form on the right hand side. And well, now uh, in geometry, we are interested in these points a and k to the n. Um, but now we've seen that they correspond bijectively to maximal ideals of um, this ring here. So we can translate it uh, points to maximal ideals. So that means that we are interested 
and maximal ideals. Um, okay, so that's the starting point, but um, we have we will generalize a little bit because prime ideals have better uh, factorial uh, properties. So um, you will see later what I mean by that. But let's write it down. So with um, maximal ideals, there are some problems. So we consider instead all prime ideals. And if we want to do geometry, we have to look at only the maximal ideals. So if we want to do geometry in the classical sense. OK, so now we look at prime ideals. And let's say uh, A is a ring. so. Maybe let me write it down. So let A be a ring. And by ring, I all, always mean a commutative and it should have a one. Okay, and also um, another remark so ring homomorphisms send one to one. Okay. Um, so we have this ring, and now we look at the set of prime ideals of A, which we denote by the spectrum of A, so spec of A, which means spectrum, and this is the set of prime ideals. Okay, so that's just notation, not much happened here. But uh, now we'll see um, what I meant before um, with the factorial properties. So um, let phi from A to B be a ring homomorphism. And now I claim that we get um, a morphism in the category of, let's say, sets at first. Namely, um, we get a map from spec drum of B to spec A. And what is this map? So we have a prime ideal in B, and it gets mapped to the inverse image of the prime ideal under the map phi. And so we see that we get a contravariant functor. Of course, um, one has to check, but it's not too hard. So contravariant functor spec from the category of rings, which or in our case will be commutative with one, to the category of sets. OK, so that's the first um, observation. Um, well, if you don't know what a functor is, uh, you can look it up. But basically, it means that we get for every um, ring here, we get um, a set, namely the set spec A. And, uh, yeah. and also for every map between rings, we get a map of sets, which is this map spec phi. And there are some compatibility um, uh, conditions, but they are not too hard. You can look them up. OK, and um, what we'll see later is that actually it is a functor from ring to this category of topological spaces. So let me write it as a functor from a ring to top. 
Okay, and um, to see that we have to equip um, spec A with a topology. So what's the topology? It's called the Tsariski topology. Um, and probably I should also um, add a note of caution here. So there's also um, a Tsariski topology. One can put a Tsariski topology on this k to the n, but here we are not interested in k to the n, but rather um, on the set of prime ideas. Okay, and how do we define it? We define it by defining closed sets. So close, and we'll later see that um, closed sets um, uh, satisfy the conditions of a topology. So closed sets are of the form V of M. So V stands for vanishing, and we'll see the motivation shortly, why it's called vanishing. So we take the prime ideals such that M is a subset of the prime ideals. So the prime ideals are basically the points in our topological space. And M is any subset of A. Okay, and now um, let me give the motivation for this definition. So this is a rather important definition, but um, maybe it's even more important to get the motivation for this definition. Namely, let's pick <clears throat> an element from the set M. And now we consider F as a function. So what do I mean by consider it as a function? So we interpret, um, so we write F of P equal to the equivalence class in, let's say, well, either in the um, integral domain A mod P, so that's an integral domain as P is a prime ideal, or we can also consider it as an element in the um, field of fractions of um, A mod P, as, as I already mentioned, it's a, an integral domain. Okay, so that's our um, function, but of course note that if we vary P, we get different fields here, so it's not really a function how we want it to be, but that's the intuition. And so this um, V of M is the uh, set of points um, on which so set of points on which all functions in M vanish. So we consider the um, elements of the ring A as functions and the uh, <clears throat> prime ideas as points. And that's the intuition. Um, uh, maybe you should think about this a little more because that's quite important to understand this intuition. And yeah, that's it um, for now. Next time we'll probably see that this really defines a topology. And I'm not sure what else. And probably I'll also um, do a more um, videos about algebraic geometry and probably sometimes um, uh, more basic ones which are well build some videos building upon another so probably I'll do a little bit about schemes and stuff like that and some more exercise like 
videos. Okay, so um, that's it for today. Have a good day and bye.